Okay, we're back to continue our Blu-ray update after looking at the big heat and, and the first part. And now we're going to look at four films here. We're going to start with The Little Girl Who Lives Down the Lane, which starred uh, Jodie Foster. Uh, sort of a uh, lesser-seen cult uh, film from the 70s, a little bit more obscure. Uh, she did five films in 1976, and this is one of them. Uh, she, also, she did a film called Echoes of Summer. She did Taxi Driver, of course, which... Uh, really made her career. Bugsy Malone, Freaky Friday, another big benchmark in her career, and this one. has a beautiful uh, looking set here from Signal One, and uh, it doesn't have a lot of special features. It has an audio commentary by DVD Delirium's Nathaniel Thompson and Tim Greer, so they're uh, fans of the film doing an audio commentary, and it has the original theatrical trailer, and that is uh, pretty much it. But the good news is that it has a really good transfer. Now, the first couple of minutes while the credits are rolling, the transfer is very dirty. Um, the opticals for the opening credits must have got some dirt in there, but it was a bad look right at the beginning. But as soon as the credits are over, the film becomes really clean and crisp and, and especially good for a, a film of this type from back then. The story is of uh, Jodie Foster playing a smart sort of 13-year-old girl who lives in a secluded house that she and her father rent but a number of locals come calling and they find Ryan's father is never around. Uh, so the suspicions uh, come from members of the community, including a few uh, real oddballs and sleazy characters. And uh, you know, I'm not going to give anything away, but it's uh, an interesting film, mostly, mostly set in one location. Really good performances and uh, it's worth picking up for sure. Vision be locked, check it out. And I believe it's coming out on Kino uh, Lorber uh, in 2016 and first half of 2016 and uh, I doubt it will have this commentary I don't know if they'll have any special features at all uh, with no Kino quite possibly not um, but if you want to wait for the region A if you don't have a region free player that's coming up another uh, film from Masters of Cinema Eureka and it's John Frankenheimer's Seconds which came out on Criterion on Blu-ray a couple of years back now, this is using the same uh, rest 4K transfer for the restoration. Uh, I thought I think this one looks slightly better than the Criterion one, and uh, it comes with uh, a different set, uh, some crossover features, but a different uh, set of features. So it's optional English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. It's a feature audio length comedy with John Frankenheimer, which is from the early 2000s, which appears on the Criterion release also. But also has a second uh, feature-length audio commentary with film scholar Adrian Martin, who's done quite a few commentaries uh, for older films, and it's quite good. It also has a video appreciation of, appreciation of the film by critic and novelist Kim Newman, which is a, a, a well a good-length um, featurette where Kim Newman discusses uh, three films in the Paranoia trilogy uh, by John Frankenheimer, including Manchurian Candidate, Seconds, and uh, Seven Days in May. It also has a theatrical trailer and a 28-page booklet featuring new writings on the film by critic Mike Sutton and David Cairns and illustrated throughout with archival imagery, which I'll show you in one second. There's also a DVD of the film, which... And then behind it has a reversible sleeve, which I will show you in a moment. I really like this artwork here. It's also on the uh, menu for the film once you put the disc in. And yeah, that's pretty cool. A reversible sleeve, more of the classic artwork for seconds, yeah, which I might go for actually. I might switch that over. I think it's better than this. So there we go. Um, so seconds is about a guy who wants to start a new life. Uh, goes through a procedure carried out by a secret organization called the company and uh, they give him a fresh start and a um, and the problems he encounters with that it was loosely remade as a very very different film uh, this year with a film with uh, Ryan Reynolds called Selfless uh, this is much more an arty film than an action film though and I actually was a little underwhelmed when I first saw it um, and I've not seen it since. I, I liked it, but it wasn't. I was expecting more from what I'd read. But uh, it has sort of stayed with me all the same. And 
um, I decided uh, to give it another go if I could pick it up cheap and I certainly did I found this uh, on special so I'm going to give it another go uh, in full I've checked out the the audio visual quality but I haven't sat down to watch the film in full anyway it's a quality release of this film if you like this film and it's uh, you know probably not for everybody and um, I like it but I, I'm hoping I like it even more when I, when I recheck it out on uh, blu-ray okay so now we have the French release of two hands which is a uh, Heath Ledger Brian Brown crime film from I can't remember when this came out, but I'm, I'd like to say the 90s or early 2000s. It also has Rose Byrne in it before she was really famous, and Heath Ledger before he was famous. Um, it's an Australian film. Uh, the local release uh, down here in Australasia is only 1080i and uh, doesn't really have uh, much in the way of special features. Uh, not that this is much better in that department, but this is 1080p uh, HD and uh, has uh, 5.1 DTS HD master audio in both French and English and removable French subtitles. And it has the longer version of the film included as well as uh, the French and English trailer. Has uh, some French text interviews, which I couldn't really read. You know, you can pick up a little bit when you look through them. And it has a connection to some uh, internet, if you have that ability to go from your player through to the internet. It has some more information on there, but that may also be in French, or it might just be photos, I'm not sure. Um, so the special features aren't all that great, but it does have uh, both versions of the film. And is in 1080p, and it looks really good. Uh, I'm quite impressed with the transfer. The, uh, the the transfer down here, the 1080i one, did not uh, get that great reviews. I never saw it, but uh, I think this is the way to go, and it is region B locked. Lastly, uh, with a voucher, I picked up um, this, The Dead Zone on Blu-ray, uh, the Australasian release of it, and um, it is probably the worst Blu-ray as far as, um, you know, it looks okay, but the D it doesn't look much better than the DVD. It doesn't look worse than the DVD. It looks slightly better than the DVD. Um, a 56-inch screen, I should have noticed I put the DVD in, I put the Blu-ray in, um, and uh, there's really only the most marginal of difference, and it's a real shame. You can tell more when the credits are on. Uh, at the beginning, the credits are a bit jaggier on the DVD, but when it's actually playing, it looks slightly tighter in Blu-ray, slightly better in motion, but... Um, not the upgrade you'd be hoping for, so I'm glad I got this cheap. I'm actually keeping the DVD. I had the DVD of this prior uh, because uh, the DVD has a ton of special features and the Blu-ray has none, so I'm keeping the DVD to keep the special features. Um, I almost wish I hadn't wasted my voucher on this because the upgrade is so poor and it's not like I'm selling the DVD to get um, make some money because I'm keeping that because of the uh, special features. But that's the DVD I kept. I managed to change the case out to one with a extra holder. And there's the Blu-ray. Um, really a poor effort uh, from... Uh, I believe it's the same as same transfer as the one in Europe because it's on Via Vision Entertainment and Mad Men have licensed it for Australasia. Unless some specialized company gets a hold of the rights for some country, I don't see I don't know if it's a popular enough film for it to uh, get. Uh, maybe just because David Cronenberg's name is attached, they it might get some treatment down the road. Uh, it's based on the Stephen King book about a guy you can uh, see into the future, and stars Christopher Walken and Martin Sheen and Tom Skerritt. And uh, it's a good thriller. It's actually one of my three favorite uh, Cronenberg films. I'm not a huge Cronenberg fan, to be quite honest. Uh, but I like uh, I like this one, so uh, that's it. These are my update and this from earlier today. Check them out.